This video will be discussing 1A1 slash 1A2 diode ringing. The 1A1 diode matrix block that is in the view of the camera at the very top of the block uh, where the green lead is there is five lugs. I can have five different 400 type KTU ringing leads connected one to each of those lugs. Then down on the left side of the block it has A, B, C, D, E, and F. That is a left to right row so we have a red alligator clip on A, a yellow on B, a white on C, and nothing on the remaining three. I have five diodes connected on this block. So where the green alligator clip is, we will ring all three telephones. Where the second lead over, this would be the second 400 KTU, I would only ring one phone, and that would be the B phone on the yellow lead. When I move my lead to the third uh, set of lugs over, I will only ring the C telephone. So I have a diode from three over to the C phone, a diode from number one over to the C phone. On the B, I have a diode uh, from line one to the B terminal, and then from line one to the A terminal. This would be a normal diode bridge arrangement. Typically, they would be larger than this. In addition to the diode matrix, Inside of the telephone on the network where the bell is, is the terminals A and K. In this case, this is K and that is A. There's a capacitor between them two terminals. On diode ringing, this capacitor has to be removed from the circuit electrically. So you can take a lead from either here and move it to here or this one to here, either way eliminating the capacitor. Using diode ringing, you're taking an AC signal and effectively rectifying it into a DC type signal. Here's a 425 network, <clears throat> an older network, and the capacitor between these two terminals. Same exact thing. When the diodes are put in, the anode or cathode, either one, they all must be pointed the same direction. Otherwise, that line will not ring on that phone if one of them is backwards. I have three ringers set up, which are in telephones sitting around on my workbench. So I will show each of the three phones and the phone that uh, line one, which is what I'm going to move right here, will ring all three telephones. Then I will move this to what would be line two, and that should only ring the yellow lead. And then I will move this to what would be line three, and that will ring the white lead. These diode matrices can become very complex if you don't have good records or a good understanding of how this works. I drew out a very simple paper showing the 400 KTU, the diodes, which is in this case five, and then three telephones, A, B, and C. So I will show that, and that was the representation of what is in this video. I created another sheet that's a more complex uh, paper 
and I do not intend on wiring that up because it's too much labor intensive to do that just for a two or three minute video. Here's the schematic that I made of the ringing circuit I just demonstrated. So line number one's got a 400 KTU and the RC lead, which is the ring in common, going to the diodes, from the diodes going to phone A, B, or C, and then to ground, which is a power supply ground. So line number one will ring all three phones. So we have a diode here, a diode here, and a diode here connecting to all three phones. Line number two will only ring, um, I'm sorry, yeah, line number two will ring the B phone, and line number one will ring the B phone, line one and two. Line number three here will ring the C phone, and line number one will ring the C phone. This is a very simplified document. Here is a slightly more complex document where I have four line cards and five phones. Try to get the whole thing here. And you can pause the video and study this. So as it is, line number one will ring the A telephone, and A telephone will basically ring on lines one, two, and three. The B telephone, which is this one here, will ring on lines two and three. The C telephone will only ring on line one. The D telephone will ring on one, two, three, and four, and then the uh, fifth phone, um, which is E, should ring on line uh, number four, it looks like. Again, I showed a capacitor inside of the telephone, and that I've just moved the lead that would here that would normally go to K over to A, so that capacitor is physically there, but it's not in the circuit electrically. And this shows all of the diodes, so the ring common lead. These diode matrices can have toggle switches added at different places to control when a phone rings and doesn't ring. You can also add toggle switches past the diodes to make the phone ring or not ring. They, many different combinations can be acquired. This is kind of a fundamental of how things should be done. Um, doing these diodes on a 66M150 is possible. Uh, so then you can have this. However, you're going to have to think out the entire wiring process to achieve whatever the goal is. Normally, I would not recommend diode matrices um, in most applications. Back here where we have um, one phone ringing only on one line, you could take this ringer, as long as the capacitor was still in it, and hook the ringer across the tip and the ring of the phone line, and it would ring off the phone line, not off of the phone system. And then where you've got line one here and line one here, line three and line two, you have no choice but to have a diode matrix. Generally in the systems I installed, if we had some situation where, for example, the C phone was the only single phone that needed to have two lines ringing on it that was not the same as the B phone, we would strap the RC leads together for line one and two and hook up that phone normally. I would take the C phone and hook, um, I would not have it wired on line uh, number one. I would wire it on maybe, we'll say, line number three and then add a second ringer next to the telephone on the wall or in the ceiling or something like that. 
because diode matrices can become a real pain in the butt to take care of. And if you don't have good records and you make a lot of changes, you can end up with a real disaster on your hands. This is a photo of a BSP that shows the wiring. And then the other side, I will move the camera over to it to get it. This is showing what happens to the ringer frequency or the, the cycle when you're using a diode. And this is a simple illustration. Here is a picture of a 2565 that I moved the red lead. Here is a lot of 1A1 matrix blocks that has yet to be wired into my system. These blocks are as I got them, except I've cleaned off some of the diodes and the old wires. Below here is <clears throat> some plant equipment diode matrices using dip switches or slide switches. So you cross connect the KTUs and the phones to the 66 block and then you operate a slide switch for the desired selection. And then here is some diodes that I made up on my own 66B3 block. Here's the wiring side of the plant equipment diode ringing blocks. The 518-010-108 is what's called a bell system practice. You can find that practice at the telephone collectors international website in the library section.